from the W. Page Pitt School of Journalism and Mass Communications, your home for the latest Marshall University news and sports. You're watching the MU Report. Good afternoon. Welcome to MU Report. This newscast is coming to you from the studios of Marshall University. From news from around the campus and the community. I'm Daniel Wright. And I'm Breon Taylor. We're glad you're joining us. Now, on to our top story. It's midterm exam times on campuses everywhere. And with midterms comes stress, sometimes lots of stress. And students will typically look for anything to take their minds off the workload, at least temporarily. As Chantel Foster reports, different student organizations at Marshall are offering creative ways to get some relief from this midterm craziness. The groundhog said six more weeks of winter, but the weather had another idea that brought students from around the fire into the sun. Two organizations took advantage of this and set up outside of the student center. Pause for a cause gave people a chance to look up from their books between classes to walk and play with puppies from a local animal shelter. It's $2 for five minutes with the animals and all the proceeds will go to the Guy and Dot Elementary after school program. Well, the fundraiser obviously because this um, with midterms coming up, it's a stressful time. So we kind of want to do a, like a stress relief fundraiser to get students involved, to have them have like a relaxed environment to um, relax from midterms. Ten feet over from the wagging tails is another cause that fights every day for the right to freedom. The end it movement sits much longer in its spot where the booth will stay open for 27 hours to represent the 27 million people suffering. Baptist Campus Ministries on Marshall's campus are in it to end it and passed out bracelets and red X's to create awareness of raising slavery issues around the world. And today is End It Day, which is the day where people all around the globe are wearing red X's on their hands to show support and just kind of bring awareness to the fact that there are still 27 million people in human slavery. Two different organizations rescuing two different hearts makes for the purest definition of freedom. Chantel Foster, MU Report. In terms of stress, many students say the subject of this next story is far more serious and not easily managed. The transgender community on campus and across the country says it feels threatened by the President of the United States and growing anti-tolerance rhetoric. To take a stand anymore is to invite possible backlash. But at Marshall Sorority and its national affiliation are taking a stand anyway. Alpha Chi Omega now will consider applicants who are transgender for the first time Alpha Chi Omega's Marshall chapter members say they are thrilled to be giving transgender students a leg up in a time where many is trying to throw them down. I think it's really wonderful. I think it's great that like we're including everyone because it is about supporting each other. It's not to like exclude them. It's just, it's really great. Alpha Chi Omega says that this could start a trend at college universities with being the first of many to allow transgender students inside their sorority. I think there will be a little bit of pushback from people who aren't familiar with the idea or who do not accept the idea or tolerate the idea. I, I hope that that pushback is very limited and that people would have open minds and realize that we're all human beings. Alpha Chi Omega Marshall Chapter says that they are willing to stand up to those who oppose their decision and will be accepting to all. I think it's just important to let them know that they need to accept people and that this is something that's going to just keep coming and it's just going to benefit us all in the long run if we just accept each other and love each other. I forgot Omega says the first candidate has not applied yet, but they are opening the door to a terrific way to address gender equality in a positive light. Breon Taylor, MU Report. In the meantime, students may visit the LGBTQ office or Greek life offices in the Student Center for more information. As the end of the semester approaches, graduating seniors will begin to apply for jobs, as they always do. But more and more people who are financing those degrees are questioning what people actually get for their money. As Cassell Lim reports, Marshall educators say that value is far more than monetary. College continues to be one of the best investments one can ever make into their futures. However, it is still inevitable that in the 21st century, there are still people who don't have access to strong teachers and education they should be having. That is almost the, um, the one piece that we can contribute 
uh, to create a really powerful society. And education can make up for a lot of other uh, differences like economics or your home life. I mean, education should be able to, you know, propel someone into a life that they are really proud of. According to the U.S. Department of Education, there are still challenges facing education today, recognizing that they are underserved students like minorities and low-income students who attend and finish college at far lower rates than their peers. I think that um, if you are able um, and you are offered such an ability to get an education, I think that it would, it's wonderful to take that opportunity because not a lot of people are offered that. Not just study. The education means you know anything. It can be the I mean experiences like you know talking to your friend. You can get knowledge from American culture or something like that. One of the reasons people are getting a degree is the promise for more earnings in the future. According to statistics, college graduates are more likely to earn double the amount compared to those without a degree. The truth is, your education matters. Kasalim, MU Report. Thanks, Cassell. We now take it over to sports, where we got to sit down with a very special freshman from right here in Huntington, who's setting records for the women's track team. Marshall's track and field program hasn't had many athletes with raw talent like Sophia Mitchell. This season, the herd gained something special. Sophia is a really talented young lady. Uh, she actually has not even uh, reached her fullest potential because she's very young to the rules. This is only her really her second year of short hurdle work. Uh, she just started it her senior year. Track is important to me because it gives me something to do. I feel like it means a lot to me just because it keeps me sane, it keeps me relaxed, you know, everything's tumbling around me. Like I still feel like I still like get on the track and nothing else matters. Sophia grew up right here in Huntington earning the Ray McCoy Track Athlete of the Year twice. The freshman talent has already tied the school record in the 300 meter run at 40.52 seconds. It was only off the 60 hurdle school record by five milliseconds. Sophia is my best friend and roommate. When we're practicing, she motivates us to work harder and to go harder and because we're looking to break the four by four record outdoors. Um, my sixth grade coach talked me into running. He said that I used to play basketball, I wasn't very good, but I had a lot of speed, so he's like, you should come out and run track. So I was like, well, if I'm not coordinated with the ball, then I might be better on the track. And she was right. Sophia grabbed her All-Conference USA title by placing second in the 60-meter hurdles at Conference Championships in Birmingham, Alabama, making history along with the rest of her team, earning seventh place, the highest Marshall has ever scored. Daniel Wright, MU Report. We wish Sophia the best of luck as she begins this year's outdoor track season. Let's now take it over to Jake Griffith with your weekly Marshall Sports Update. Jake? Well, with one eye already looking toward Birmingham, the Marshall men's basketball team embarked on its final stretch of the season this past Saturday in Charlotte, North Carolina. The Herd were looking for a clean sweep this season of the Charlotte 49ers. Keep in mind, back in January, Marshall upended Charlotte here in Huntington 110-93, so you can definitely expect some offensive fireworks between these two schools. And it turned out to be a hard-fought contest for the Herd, who had to come from behind. They led early, and Charlotte stormed all the way back. But ultimately, Marshall picks up the win, 93-89, in a pretty hostile environment to boot. Charlotte had a, a huge crowd there on hand Saturday. It's just Marshall's fourth win this season, away from the confines of the Cam Henderson Center. The men's team now has to switch gears and prepare for a new opponent this Thursday. The Rice Owls. Rice currently sits one spot ahead of Big Green in the Conference USA standings, but this is the only meeting between the two schools this season. That means that a Marshall win gives the Herd the head-to-head -head tie break over Rice heading into the Conference USA tournament. But the buzz around practice Tuesday was not only about the Owls, but also about senior guard Stevie Browning. The senior missed last Thursday's game against Old Dominion with back spasms, a loss, mind you, but he says he should be good to go going forward. But it, has, it hasn't done that since, uh, since Thursday, so hoping it's, hoping it's done for now, knock on wood somewhere. 
Now, upon his return on Saturday against the 49ers, the senior played one of his most complete games this season for Dan D'Antoni. He scored 27 points, went 5 of 6 from three-point land, and hauled in five boards as well. Browning knows the importance of Thursday's game, not just for the standings, but also momentum-wise heading into the Conference USA Tournament. Huge, especially with this one coming up. I think we're either either tied or right close with Rice in the conference, so uh, we really want to get this head-to-head -head and uh, send us into the conference tournament the right way. Marshall takes on the Owls Thursday at the Cam Henderson Center. The game is set for a 7 p.m. Eastern time tip-off. Now, speaking of postseason Conference USA play, the Marshall Swim and Dive team stormed into Atlanta this past week for the Conference USA Championships. The team took third place, setting a new school record in total points scored with 724 as a team. More impressively than that, though, and listen to this, they set 13 new school records while down in Atlanta. That is ultra impressive right there. Hats off to the Swim and Dive team. And last but most certainly not least, the Marshall softball team was back on the diamond this weekend. Now you'll notice kind of a common theme here in sports today. A lot of Carolina foes for Marshall Athletics this past weekend. Softball was no different. They were taking place in the Carolina Classic. They finished that tournament up against the Tar Heels of North Carolina on Saturday. Marshall ultimately fell 8-3 to the heels. The bats really came alive for UNC. Five dingers on 11 hits. Marshall junior Alicia DeRazio led the way, going 3-4 for four with an RBI and two stolen bags. She leads the team in that category this season. The loss drops the herd to 9-4 on the year. But they're back on road Friday as they head to Georgia for the Eagle Classic, hosted by Georgia Southern. That's all the time we have for sports. Breon, Danny? Back to you guys. Finally on the show, it's the time of year when Marshall says a special thank you to all his many donors. Administrators say as state budget spends less on higher education, the need for donation has grown greatly. That's why thank you is more important than ever. Many students go day to day without thinking about the steps they actually took to get to Marshall. But Thank a Donor Day allows Marshall students to show their appreciation for the people who made their scholarships possible. Thank a Donor Day is really important to Marshall students because it's a day where we become very aware of who the donors are that provide the money for us to go to school, that provide the money for our new buildings to be built, our new facilities to be provided. And it's just a day that we can take time to really make ourselves aware of who we need to appreciate. Thank you. By taking pictures, creating posters, and sending thank you cards, many Marshall students say they are happy to acknowledge their donors because of how much they changed their lives. A lot of times we have students tell us that their scholarships are a miracle and they wouldn't even be able to attend Marshall without the support of the gracious donors. Um, when I was an undergrad, I received the A. Michael Perry Scholarship and that was a big help every semester. Um, definitely helped alleviate some of the debt that may occur in the future. And um, I also was a recipient of an athletic scholarship through the track and field program, which was definitely a huge help. Thank a Donor Day is just a kickoff to all the gratitude students feel. Scholarship recipients will join their donor for a nice brunch social in April to get to know each other better. And there it is. Sometimes all it takes is a simple thank you to show your appreciation. I'm Danielle Wright, Emmy Report. That's all the time we have for this edition of Emmy Report. This show will air on our YouTube channel and on the Marshall Parthenon website. And we're always looking for news that affects the Marshall campus and the community. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Emmy Report. I'm Daniel Wright. And I'm Breon Taylor. Have a great day.